Have you ever watched a movie where soldiers are storming a castle? They may have to pass over a moat or rampart. Then they would need to find a way through or over the curtain wall. All the while, the invaders would be under attack from soldiers in the battlements. And even if they got that far, they still need to get into the interior of the castle, which involves more walls, towers and soldiers. Castles were so difficult to attack because they had several layers of security. Compromising one layer alone does not win the day. There are threats to every system and several ways an attacker may try to exploit them. When we consider how to secure a system, we need to consider defense in depth. The defense in depth principle states that there is no one or even two things that will completely secure a system. The point of this is that if one part of the security solution were to fail, then another part should be able to resist the attack. In practice, this means applying security in layers. For example, we could have a firewall and maybe an IPS on the edge of the network. Behind the firewall, there may be an email scanning service, and on the workstation, there would be antivirus software. An attacker may try to send some malicious code through email. The firewall and IPS may not pick this up, as email is a valid application. So, we'd rely on the email scanner. But what if that were down for some reason? Maybe it crashed. Or maybe it just didn't pick up that this email is a threat. In that case, we still have the antivirus software on the workstation to fall back on. This is an oversimplified example, but you can see that using the defense in depth strategy reduces the risk of a successful and possibly very expensive security breach. A common security mistake is to rely too heavily on the firewall. All too often people think, I have a firewall, so I'm secure. Unfortunately, that's just not true. Firewalls are only a piece of the much larger puzzle. Consider this. A simple firewall uses IP addresses and ports to allow or deny traffic. You may want to allow web browsing on the network, but is all web browsing traffic secure? An advanced firewall will take it a step further. It can do things like stateful inspection, where it determines if a packet is part of a valid flow of traffic or whether an attacker is trying to slip a packet into the middle of a conversation. An IPS can take this even further and look deeply into the traffic to see if it matches known patterns of attacks. And still, this is just the edge of the network. What about encrypting traffic with HTTPS? Requiring authentication and authorization before accessing secure resources. New security flaws are found regularly are you patching these flaws in your systems? And of course, we need to consider our endpoints. That's workstations, laptops, phones, and any other device that connects to the network. This is where we think about antivirus, host-based firewalls, and VPN connections. But we can't consider something to be reasonably secured without considering all aspects of the system. We often think about technical controls like firewalls and antivirus, but what about physical and administrative controls? We need to consider things like the security of the building, locking the door to the server room, and putting equipment in locked racks or cabinets. And what about administrative controls? These relate to policies and procedures, things like background checks for staff, identifying the proper way to handle data, and so on. A big part of this is simply educating the users. Teach them to use strong passwords, how to avoid social engineering, and how to recognize threats in general. This is by no means a comprehensive list of everything you need to think about. The key point to take away from this is that security should be applied in layers, and these layers are more than just technical controls. You should think about what would happen if a particular layer were to fail, and if it does, are there any other layers there to back it up? Don't leave security to chance. A big thank you to all the supporters of this channel. 
You helped to make videos like this one possible.